All right, um, why don't we go ahead and get started. I want to uh, welcome everyone, good afternoon. And uh, on behalf of Great Place to Work, uh, welcome to the webinar. My name is Tyler Thorpe and I'm a senior consultant at Great Place to Work. I'll be your host for the next hour. The goal of the Great Place to Work web webinars is both to share timely insights into great workplace cultures, as well as create a network across Southeast Asia of organizations and leaders who share our goal of creating and celebrating great workplaces. Joining us this afternoon are Mirawal Kad uh, Kademur Rahman, Rachel Domingo, and Prudence Pong from the Ericsson HR team. They will be speaking to us about their efforts to empower connection at Ericsson in the next normal. So welcome Awal, Rachel, and Prudence. As you will hear, around the world, Ericsson is a critical player in enabling all of us to stay connected in these virtual times. First, a few logistics for, logistics for our session. Uh, please mute your microphones. You can use the Zoom chat function to share any comments and questions that you may have during the session. And if you prefer, you can send a private chat message to my colleague, Cyrus Tapia. Uh, she is on the, uh, uh, on the chat and she'll be monitoring the chat during the session. The session is going to be recorded for future playback. And here you can see our agenda for the hour. After a brief introduction to Great Place to Work, Awal, Prudence, and Rachel will, will introduce us to Ericsson and tell us about their impressive efforts to create connection in response to the disruption caused by COVID-19. I'll have a chance to ask them a few questions about their efforts to empower connection in the next normal. And we'll have time at the end uh, for your questions and comments. First, let me begin by providing a quick introduction to Great Place to Work. Our mission is to build a better world by helping organizations become great places to work for all. At Great Place to Work, we're experts in building great workplaces, leveraging over 30 years of research and experience. We are dedicated to helping leaders successfully navigate issues of trust and performance within their workplace cultures. Great Place to Work has offices in 60 countries around the world, with the Philippines office our most recent addition. Annually, our trust index surveys represent the voices of over 10 million employees and allow us to identify an unparalleled list of best workplaces, both in Asia and around the world. Our Great Place to Work model defines a great workplace as one in which employees trust the people they work for, they have pride in what they do, and they enjoy the people they work with. So the focus is on relationships, three key relationships with management, your colleagues, and your job. We measure these three relationships using what we call our trust index survey, utilizing the five dimensions that you can see on the lower right. The dimensions of credibility, fairness, and respect focus on an employee's relationship with management. The dimension of camaraderie focuses on an employee's relationships with their colleagues. The dimension of pride focuses on the employee's relationship with their job work they do, the team they work with, and the organization they're a part of. So in all, these dimensions are key components of great workplaces and together enable building a foundation of trust. Both the Ericsson Singapore and Philippines offices recently received certifications as great places to work. And we congratulate them on that achievement. So now let's hear from our guests about Ericsson's efforts to create connection in response to the disruption caused by COVID-19. Sorry. So I'd like to turn it over now to Awal, the head of people for Singapore, Brunei, Philippines, and Pacific Islands. Awal? Thank you very much, Tyler. Can you hear me? Yes. Very good. Thank you very much, Tyler and GPTW team uh, for inviting Ericsson to join this session. And we are very much proud today to share our practices with the rest of the industries. It's a huge opportunity for us so that that's the way we can move forward. We can share our knowledge with other industry. And of course, it's not about sharing our knowledge and that will give us an opportunity to learn from other industry as well through your participation in this session. 
So before I go into the detailed part of it, that okay, what are the things that we are doing during this COVID pandemic? So I want to introduce the company that I have been working with for the last 14 years. And I feel really proud today that I'm representing a company that uh, helped us grow in our own domain. And I'm representing that company today in front of all of you. So when I joined Ericsson, most of the people used to tell me that, okay, are you joining Sony Ericsson? Probably that was the practicality 14 years back, but you're no longer Sony Ericsson. We're just Ericsson at this point in time. So if I look into our company as a whole, it's a global company, first of all. And what we do, if you, if you look into the, all the service provider in our part of the world, in our geography, especially Philippines and Singapore, we are namely working with the, all the renowned telecom operator. If I give an example of Smart or can be Singtel in Singapore, we work with them. And to also, we ensure that we have a connectivity through mobile broadband, fixed broadband wireless, wireless connection that we should also ensure that. And at the same time, what our service provider they're using at this point in time our global skill and scale, which is the most important element. And of course, the product solution that we provide are our technology leadership across the globe that really helps our service provider to shine in their respective countries at this point in time. As I have mentioned, it's a truly global company operating 180 countries across the globe. We have got employees, 595,000 employees across the globe. And if you look in the patent part of it, we've got 54,000 patent in Ericsson. Obviously that, testifies that whatever smartphone we are talking about these days, it comes through Ericsson equipment, whatever Ericsson devices that you will find in each and every smartphone that you're talking about. So if you look into the number, 54,000 patent, it's a lot of, lot of, lot of patent that we are currently uh, managing. At the same time, Ericsson operates globally and obviously everything cannot come from the, uh, your headquarter. We also work, work in market area wide. So currently the market area that Singapore and Philippines part of it, we said market area, Southeast Asia, Oceania, and India. Basically that market area starts from, if I put together geography wise, it starts from India, then you can put Southeast Asia and Australia and New Zealand. And of course, Bangladesh and Sri Lanka are part of it. So these are the countries that we are covering, almost 13 countries. I'll talk about it a bit about our market area in my next slide. And obviously, you can also see all these net sales number. Uh, we are uh, net sales is around 227 billion sec across the globe uh, in 2019. Obviously, that is in Swedish Corona, and that also shows that we are a Swedish company, and our headquarter is in Sweden. And the market area that I was referring to, we have got around 23,000 employees who are sitting in this diverse market area. If you go to the, go to the next slides, okay. Thank you very much, Tyler. And if I look into that market area that I was referring to from India up to New Zealand, and that's where we have got 30 countries, but at least we have got 13 market that we are currently focusing on. That means those are the key market that we have. Out of that, of course, the countries that we are representing, me and my team today on the call, like Singapore, Philippines, and Brunei, we are proud to support this uh, part of the geography. And it's, it's a quite diverse geography, honestly speaking. If you look into Singapore and Brunei, they're the top countries in terms of GDP. If you look into Philippines, they are slightly lagging behind in the GDP. But if you look in another angle that, okay, number of population that you have in Philippines, they are one of the top 15 countries in the world. So it's a diverse country that we are managing. When it comes to service provider, we, I have mentioned about our telecom operator, namely Singtel, maybe DST in Brunei, UNN in Brunei, and Smart and Globe in Philippines. So whenever we talk about those operators, of course, the people who are very much uh, familiar with telecom industry, where we talk about ARPU, average revenue per unit, and you can see that average revenue per unit in these three countries varies between $2 up to $30. So you can easily understand how diverse the market that you're dealing at this point in time. In this market, uh, if I look into these three countries, obviously you've got around 1,000 employees, and you're proud to host a shared service center in Philippines who supports the global Ericsson all, this, all through these 180 countries. If you go to the next slide, thanks Tyler. This, quite, uh, this slide quite interesting to me. Interesting in the sense that that talks about us that what we are doing currently. See, if you look into this three hours average time that we spend mobile devices, we all are doing it. Nowadays, mobile devices that become our part of our life, honestly speaking. You want to buy a ticket, you want to book a flight ticket. Of course, we're not booking flight ticket nowadays, but 
any kind of support that you need on the ground, be it Grab, be it any kind of service provider, ordering food, food panda, you're using our mobile phone. So we're spending a lot of time in that particular moment uh, in our handset. And obviously, if you, that will give us a, give you an understanding that which industry we're in. We're talking about ICT industry. That's why we're ordering food through mobile phone. As I mentioned in my previous slide, the number of patents that you have, every smartphone has the presence of Ericsson devices in their smartphone. So you can easily understand how important we are in this total, um, uh, total ecosystem. If you look at another number of it, the 50% of uh, growth that you're uh, foreseeing, right? We have got around 9 billion subscription, by the way. Sub when it's a subscription, maybe people, one people can have two different subscriptions. Of course, the number is more than the global population. That's why we're saying that we are aiming around 9 billion subscription at, at this point in time. And of course, it's a digitalized industry. You can get to see so many digital. And of course, in going forward, probably whenever we are sharing our best practice in the industry, definitely I'm going to talk about how digitalized our people function uh, system in Ericsson at this point in time. I go into the, don't go into the number. If you see on the right hand side, how big this industry is. It's a lot of money and this, this is the potential of this industry that we are in. And honestly, as an individual of being part of Ericsson, we're really, really proud uh, to be part of this industry. And we'd like to continue contribute in this particular industry, obviously, uh, in terms of that. Now, if I go to the next slide, so we're talking about industry. So now the most important element comes in. Okay, we understand that we're uh, supporting our service provider, right? But how do we connect the society? Are we doing something for the society? Of course, I've given the example of mobile phone. On an average, we are spending almost three hours a day in the mobile phone for our daily needs. But if you think about what we're doing for the society, of course, there are so many things has been done through Ericsson. If I give the example of our market area, that market area is from India up to New Zealand, diverse market, diverse challenges. So if you think about the challenges that cities like Manila, Indonesia, Jakarta, or Bangkok they are facing, we are part of it. How to solve the transport situation? How to help with the pollution system? How to help with utilities? So you can, this, this is one kind of uh, cities that you're talking about in your market area. If I look another set of segment here, of course it goes to Singapore and Vietnam, where we can be part of transport system, in, we can be part of shipment uh, industries of these two countries, that is, which is very, very helpful for those two countries. If I go to Malaysia and Australia, of course, the amount of uh, impact you're going to make in the agricultural sector, then definitely that will help those countries. So in a nutshell, we are playing a bigger role. If I think about device, business, individual, and the country level, we are making tremendous impact in the economy of those countries. Next slide, please, Tyler. Okay, this is one of the favorite slides I always talk about since my joining in Ericsson. So if we look into this slide, we are talking about uh, three things. One is our core values. I think when you are in, you're in childhood, right, we're being taught what the vowels are, A, E, I, O, U, we can remember that. So when I joined Ericsson, these three core values were embedded on us that okay, professionalism, respect, perseverance, that we carry in our day-to-day -day activities, whatever we do today. So when I'm focusing on these three core values, again, I have to repeat that, professionalism, respect, and perseverance. And this respect part, especially I want to focus on that, that help us moving in the industry. That's where we see that many of our colleagues, when I joined per Ericsson personally, I felt that people were working for this company 10 years, 15 years, and I was saying that, 10 years, 15 years, it's a quite a long journey. How come, right? Now, if I look back my career, I have already spent 14 years in Ericsson. If, it's, if I think about what are the things is a pooling factor for me that, okay, I want to stay in Ericsson and continue and contribute to this industry. Of course, our life here at Ericsson, respectful. We respect our colleague and I think tremendously. That is more of the important we value, the feedback of our colleague. That is more important. That's what we always look forward to as a human being. Now, another angle that I can share, of course, probably I'm from Bangladesh. I'm currently based in Philippines supporting these countries. You can easily understand that we encourage mobility. In our call, three of us in our team, we're from three different nationalities. Prudence will be Prudence is from Malaysia, Rach is from Philippines, I'm from Bangladesh. So that's the beauty of Ericsson that we have the values, 
we have the feedback from all these different nationality and we know how to respect those nationalities and take a decision which is very very helpful for our industry if i give another example if i focus on these three countries where prudence myself and richard supporting where we have got 30 nationalities you can easily understand that how many diverse our organization is 30 nationalities among these three countries another example diversity i have already covered we are very much diverse in terms of culture, I've given the example of internal mobility. And last part, I think that I want to really focus on the learning and development piece. We invest heavily. I can give you one example. When COVID started hitting us, right, in that point in time, many of the companies, sometimes I hear from my industry colleague that, okay, we may need to put on hold our learning and development plan. Probably we used to, we used to with all this classroom training program, maybe we need to think twice how we conduct those training program. In Ericsson, we took only two weeks to convert all the classroom training to the online platform. It's a huge achievement for us. None of the learning and development program are halted due to this COVID-19 uh, pandemic that we are all impacted in this call. So it's a very much advantage. If I give an example that in my previous slides talking about digitalization, probably that's the advantage of a digital company that we can, we can easily move all our classroom training program in the online platform. And that really helped our colleague, even though we have pandemic in one hand, but at the same time, we continue to support our service provider and the organization at the same time. Next slide, please. Okay, now I was taking you through all the business that we do because probably I was trying to take you through that, okay, when I joined Ericsson, people say Sony Ericsson. No, it's not a Sony Ericsson, it's Ericsson. So our business dynamics, our support service providers, they are different. But when the COVID-19 hit us, then obviously I'll give one example. One example that is, it's a global company. If you think about whoever in the call, right, you have seen that the COVID didn't hit us straight away. It gradually came to our countries. If you think about the total geography, it didn't hit South America straight away. It goes from Asia, Europe, then South America. So that's the way it shifted. So we had an advantage of learn the countries which are heavily hit initially. So that really helped us because that's the beauty of being a part of a global company. Now, if I look into the initiative, I will put the initiative in three or four different buckets. In our company, we have a task force called Country Crisis Management Task Force. It's a task force which is combines of business leader, people function, OHS and security. They take all the decision in that point in time whenever any crisis moment happens. If my colleagues are on the call for Philippines, you will remember that we have got Tal Volcano situation beginning of the year. So in that point, also crisis management task force come into the picture. So that really helped us to take a decision for us. So that particular committee, they decide on the business, how do we continue with our business? That means our deliverables to our service provider, that should not get impacted. At the same time, we need to prioritize people's safety. Second thing, all the local government regulation that we need to abide by that. We can't violate any local regulation and we are respectful to the uh, local regulation. So that we need to establish in that point. So CMTF decide how the business should operate. Last but not the least, people part of it. How do we engage them? Honestly, CMTF shows us that, okay, our people leader, they can put themselves in people's shoes. They can visualize what is people's requirement is so that we can chalk down all the requirement beat internet support, beat ergonomic support, so that you can chalk down and support our colleagues on face-by-face -face basis or gradual basis. Now, I, sub I covered the CMTF part, business part, and the last part, I always praise our leaders. Leaders who can visualize that people's need, leaders who are daily, day-to-day -day basis, they are interacting the people, and as a people function, we are just facilitating the whole process so that our leaders can act on it. We also arranged a coaching session for our leaders during this pandemic. Around 200 plus leaders, they're being taught the practical example that okay, how to handle this kind of situation. They're also doing various stand-up in between uh, with their team every single day, every day or every alternate that, that really helps uh, to uh, connect with them. Before I hand over to my colleague Prudence, I would cover one more element that another committee that really helps to keep our organization going, we call RC committee, that means recreation committee so every country they are doing some other part of element like yoga zumba training uh, quiz show quiz competition this training is running all those things in parallel so that our people can get engaged sometimes when you work from home i'm sitting at home now 
three of us all are sitting at home now we are not going to office but sometimes your life become monotonous so that really helps to chill a bit of course talking to your people relax a bit and you can take it from there onwards in terms of people initiative if i go to the last part of it many of my colleagues probably are keen to hear i will cover that in the uh, later part of my presentation only I, i think there are a few things that we did we followed the local regulation that i have emphasized earlier second thing we also looked into how people can be supported by external experts so that we also looked at it we have got eap program we have got kindness commitment program so these are the unique few program that we did so without further ado i should not talk about it i should pass on the floor to my colleague prudence to talk about those particular aspects prudence over to you hi thanks so well hi everyone i hope that you all can hear me fine so um i'm prudence uh, people business partner in erickson singapore and honestly um i'm very glad to be here today you know given the opportunity by a great place to work you know to share some of the great initiative that we have done in erickson you know especially during this uh, pandemic time as well and you know if i could ask the audience here for today i think um one of the thing that we all agree to it, this is that you know there is indeed a shift in the focus due to this pandemic on you know so how some of our priorities are changing you know compared to the previous year that we have you know nowadays um organization is putting much more importance um you know emphasis on the topic of you know mental wellness on the physical health of their workforce and they consider you know this topic far more seriously than ever before that we have seen in the past so previously you know some of this topic might be a hush hush topic or some organization might view this as a good to have but i think health and wellness has become you know a great importance to us to focus on and that here has now become a need for us due to the changing circumstances that we are in today So as you know Awal has highlighted some of the key initiative earlier on so I would like to you know add on some of the flavor that you know he have briefly mentioned on to share more in depth on the initiative that we have done um internally in Ericsson itself so Tyler if you could move on to the next slide so here um you know I would like to you know talk spend more a little bit more time you know talking about Ericsson Care because this uh, you know core insight that we just celebrated our Ericsson Care week in this month in October so what is you know Ericsson Care so Ericsson Care is actually um our holistic approach to health and safety wellness well-being for us um as an Ericsson employee and everyone working on our behalf as well you know we are talking about like our customers our business partner as well as our vendor as well at ericsson we believe that we are well when you know we felt physically healthy emotionally balanced and resilient you know and financially in control and socially connected with our communities so the ericsson care programs highlights you know the importance of health safety and well-being you know through this three priority as you see here that we echo so we care we stay safe and we are well so there are also four well-being framework that forms part of this ericsson care as well which is the first one that i would like to touch on is on the you know physical well-being so physical well-being what does it means it actually means you know being healthy balanced and preventing what's preventable you know it's about us being conscious of our posture you know how we exercise what we eat now uh, which healthy or unhealthy habits you know that we adopt and we can seize the opportunity to follow some of our aspiration in life whether you know it's inside or outside of our work you know to support this framework we have actually recently launched our home office furniture program that allows our employee to purchase you know desks chair and lamp you know this give our employees the right ergonomic setup while working from home and on top of this program also we have the you know IT support program where we allow our employee to actually loan the office monitor or some of the small office equipment for example like you know keyboard you know to bring back um to home for while working from home and the second uh, well-being framework is on the emotional well-being so emotional well-being means you know maintaining a good mental health and work life balance while building a resilient you know through our awareness of our emotion 
to be able to how to deal with stress and adapt to changes as well. You know, to support with this, you know, framework, we have actually launched the uh, employee assistant program where I will share a little bit more in my subsequent slide. And um, to also to add on to this, also, you know, we host a couple of webinars where we actually um, invite some of the speaker externally from international SOS, you know, to provide for webinar on topics like resilience, change and the effects of you know, emotional well-being to um, our everyday life here. And the third component is on the financial well-being framework. So financial well-being is really talking about, you know, how we take control of our finances and us being aware of our options and confidence while making some of the financial decision to meet our goals and plan. And the last bit of it is on the uh, social health well-being. So social health well-being is about us being, you know, connected with the people we want, you know, having that sense of belonging and, you know, feel supported that, you know, we inspire towards, towards our purpose in career and in life as well. You know, to support this framework, like Awa has mentioned, we have the, you know, recreational club that help us to organize some of the plan, you know, fun activities for our colleague, like, you know, virtual workout sessions, and while we speak also, we are actually in the midst of planning our virtual dinner and dance as well. So this is the first time that, you know, we are doing this virtually. So, you know, we need to come up with a great or creative ideas to run through our session for that dinner and dance. And also, you know, we're thinking of sending care package to our colleagues as well. So all these four framework, you know, actually can impact one another. You know, for example, you know, if you keep checking email late at night, you know, maybe we forget how to relax and unwind, and then we find it hard to sleep at night. Night. Then we woke up the next day with less energy. So because we, you know, we are tired, we skip our exercise and then we feel tired and then we crave for, you know, sugary drinks, snack, you know, drink more caffeine. So this cycle keeps on continuing itself. So that's where we aim to create a culture where employee prioritize themselves. And we wanted to also create a culture where being well is accessible to all our people across the team. So talking about accessibility, we have the uh, Moai Wellbeing SharePoint, and as well as we even have a well-being app developed in Ericsson. So we using this platform, our employee actually can find vast, you know, information on tips on how to take care of themselves, you know, down from fitness tips, ergonomic tips, you know, mental health, podcasts, articles, you know, videos, and all this are accessible with just a click only. Um, next. Tyler, if you could move on. Yeah. So I've touched on, um, you know, Awa has also mentioned about the employee assistance program. So with the current global situation brought by COVID-19, I think our personal and professional lives have merged to an extent, you know, that there is no clear demarcations of working space. You know, as part of our commitment to our employee well-being, um, you know, the more the Moai People team, you know, we have launched the uh, latest initiative on the Employee Assistance Program or EAP in short. So previously, actually, uh, EAP is only available for our colleagues in India and Anza. But we see that, you know, there is a much need for us to extend this program to the rest of our employee across the Moai as well, or we call it in the Southeast Asia region. So these EAP um, services offer professional counselling to help our colleagues and as well as their family member as well, you know, to deal with any professional and or personal challenges. You know, the service, uh, it could include like, you know, improving relationship, you know, parenting issue, couple support, working from home challenges, financial challenges, and et cetera. So we have actually partnered with uh, EAP providers like, you know, Bernesta, you know, workplace option, one-to-one -one help, where they have highly trained and qualified specialists to help our employees see through such issue, you know, while maintaining full confidentiality of it. So all these services provided under our EAP are at 24 times 7 and absolute no cost to our employee as well. And there are also actually multiple ways that, you know, our employee can reach out to the counsellor, you know, either via telephone, you know, with just a call or, you know, via online chat, why a face-to-face or even the e-workshop can be arranged as well. So from what I have shared, right, I think some of you, you know, within your current organization might have rolled out, you know, similar initiative as well. But there are also some very specific um, initiative that we have designed based on our Ericsson culture transformation and the new ways of working, where now I would actually like to invite my colleague 
Rachel to share this with you. Over to you, Rach. Thank you very much, Prudence. Um, I'm happy to be here to share with you all a little bit more of what we do in Ericsson, in addition to what Awal and Prudence has mentioned earlier. Um, but before I start, maybe I can share to everyone that uh, I have been in Ericsson for um, less than 10 months, actually. And seeing how Ericsson management has handled this COVID-19 crisis has made me feel that I really am where I need to be because I feel that the management genuinely cares about the well-being of its people. And I'm also happy to say that these efforts do not go unnoticed by our employees, because um, in the recent COVID-19 surveys that we had uh, last April and September, the area of well-being, which states that employ the Ericsson takes a genuine interest in employees' well-being, has been consistent as one of the top scores across Ericsson globally. All right, so moving on, uh, I will be sharing with you all two specific programs that we have launched in Ericsson under the diversity and inclusion umbrella, which focuses on kindness, um, inclusion, empathy, and humanness. Four very beautiful words that are very timely and very much needed during these times. So um, for our kindness commitment, uh, we have formulated a set of guiding principles which will support us in creating a sense of community at work and um, most importantly, how we can demonstrate empathy and kindness to each other and to ourselves. Um, I hope you can see the background that I have here. Uh, you can just read on while I continue. These are the kindness principles uh, that we have in Ericsson. So um, why did we launch our kindness commitment program? Well, we believe in the power of kindness, especially during these times, and how it can play a role in our health and well-being and ultimately drive superior performance, uh, also foster innovation, and also create greater business value. You know, uh, it has really shown a light on this whole link between kindness, empathy, inclusion, and our overall physical and mental health and well-being. Uh, what with the lockdowns and community quarantines and having to work from home, where there's no more distinction between home and work, it, it, it's really posed a challenge on all of us. On, on, on all of us. Uh, we're feeling more stressed and more fatigued by the ongoing uncertainty of COVID and its risk on ourselves and our loved ones. And also while working from home, uh, we have to take on multiple roles at the same time. You know, we have to be productive employee, home, of, home office manager, school teacher, chef, house cleaner, you know, you name it. So COVID has really greatly increased uh, risk factors for mental health challenges. Um, so what, we, what can we do about it? Well, uh, it's very important first and foremost that we be kind to ourselves and we be kind to each other. You know, uh, simple actions uh, such as keeping ourselves physically active, which um, personally for me is so hard to do now. And also switching off after office hours, taking breaks, spending quality time with loved ones, also checking in with colleagues, encouraging them to reach out for help if they need it, and also doing the same for ourselves. Because you see, while working from home, we, we don't really get a visual understanding of how people are, are, are doing since we don't see each other face to face. So uh, it's extra important to look after our teams and colleagues during this time. Because uh, I believe that when we're kind to ourselves and to each other, we're able to minimize the impact of our, uh, on our physical and mental health. Uh, we're able to manage better those boundaries of work and home. And um, even though we're working remotely, we're also able to contribute more to the company. And most importantly, it contributes to this culture of inclusion that we're trying to create in Ericsson. You know, when, when we show kindness, we're really showing respect and empathy to our colleagues and their individual situations. So you may ask, how did we activate our kindness commitment program in Ericsson? Well, first, uh, we shared with employees a downloadable desktop wallpaper and poster, which will help them uh, remember the kindness commitment to themselves and to others. And this is actually the background that I have with me now. And on a team level, uh, we provided a conversation guide to assist the managers in having meaningful conversations with their team. So basically, they discuss what they could do better as individuals and as a team to support each kindness principle uh, and what action uh, they can commit to undertake to make a difference for their team. 
they, they then record their agreed action and take a team commitment photograph with the kindness commitment photo frame that, that we have also prov provided to them. This is, then, this is then shared to all employees to our internal web page. And lastly, tied to our kindness commitment and to grow our inclusive culture, we have introduced the Inclusion, Empathy, and Humanness Award. So Tyler, if you could uh, move on to the next slide, please, so that they can see. There, thank you. So this is basically a non-monetary award. It, it's meant to recognize and celebrate our colleagues who consistently demonstrate inclusion, compassion, empathy, caring, and kindness to others through their everyday behavior or uh, a specific action taken but who also does this without any agenda other than to support their colleagues. Uh, the recognition can be manager to team member recognition as well as peer to peer recognition. So how do employees recognize their colleagues through this program or through this award? All they have to do is go through our Encore Rewards and Recognition platform. Uh, they, they just search the name of their colleague and write why they are recognizing the person. This is then posted and seen by all employees across the region, so across Moai. And um, since it was launched uh, in Q2 this year, we have received, we received good feedback. We have received more than 200 recognitions. I've personally seen some of the recognitions and I, I'm really touched because, you know, these recognitions were not about grand gestures. Most of them were about simple everyday acts of kindness, caring and empathy that has really resonated with the employee giving the recognition. So, um, just to wrap it up to conclude, uh, we, we at Ericsson believe that our kindness commitment and our inclusion, empathy, and humanness award can, can really strengthen our, our culture of inclusion in Ericsson. Uh, we believe that inclusion is very important because uh, we want to have uh, we want people to have a strong sense of belonging and to form deeper connections. Because when you feel that you belong and that you can be your authentic self, you know, you can contribute more, you can collaborate more, you can really be at your best. So um, it's important now more than ever that we look out for each other. We may be physically working apart, but we must come together in our support for each other. You know, committing to acting with kindness and empathy and engaging as an inclusive community will help us all feel supported and bring out the best in, in us. So um, we plan to continue these programs and build on it beyond COVID uh, because we see the positive impact that it has on our people and ultimately the business. So uh, with that, uh, I thank you all and I turn you over to Tyler. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Um, and I really want to recognize Erickson for your strong commitment to creating a caring and inclusive workplace culture that's clearly helped your employees to feel safe and stay connected during these challenging times. So I have a few questions and uh, I want to encourage those in the audience to chat in any questions you, you may have as well. We'll begin with a couple that we've prepared in advance. And the first one um, for a while, well, how did the strengths of the Ericsson workplace culture help in your response to COVID? So one of the things that I noticed is that these are not things that you went out and just started in the, in the, in the response to the challenging situation, but it sounds like these are things that you've built on over time. Yep, thank you, Taylor. I think uh, I'll go back to when I, when I present, start presenting, right? I was, when I joined Ericsson, three things that we have been taught, respect, professionalism, perseverance, right? So we are being taught like that. And that values that we are inheriting more than 140 years now. So I think this hand handling situation like COVID is already in our DNA because in this kind of situation, the culture that we have respecting people, be professional and perseverant, right? That really helped us to take a decision as I was giving the example of country crisis management task force where people, the leader, they put the, themselves in the shoes of the employees that, okay, what are the things my team member is needed, my colleague are needed. I think since we show genuine care for our colleague, so that's what really helped us, that particular culture really helped us to manage COVID situation. Great. And um, now perhaps a question for, uh, for Prudence. In, in your response uh, to COVID, um, were there any notable challenges or differences that you found for employees across Southeast Asia 
whether compared with other regions or within particular countries within the Southeast Asia region. Um, and uh, so were there any that, you, that stood out for you in response to COVID, but also as you think about the future, you know, the new normal, are there any significant differences or considerations that you have? Okay, thanks, Tyler. I think um, within uh, the Moai region itself, when, when we speak, right, it's a, already a very diverse workforce, you know, like I mentioned, we have colleagues down from India, Australia, New Zealand, and obviously the Southeast Asia country as well. So um, obviously that, you know, give us, you know, a lot of differences when we're managing, you know, COVID situation in each of that countries. So, and we also have to take note if, you know, you look at the, you know, global news, some of the countries in our Moai region are actually sitting at the top 20 list of the highest cases in the world. So like, you know, for example, India itself, you know, when we speak here, so undeniably, you know, these challenges and differences in each of the country um, that we, how we respond to that is um, very much highly driven or influenced by the local practices itself, you know, the government guidelines on, on how we de develop some of the processes. So we, um, like Awal has stressed, you know, a couple of times earlier on, we really have to respect and adapt uh, to the local guidelines to ensure that we comply and act accordingly set up by the um, government itself, respective government. You know, for instance, you know, if I to take it back locally in Singapore, when the Singapore government has announced the circuit breaker in April, so we have to get, you know, all our employees to work from home. No one is supposed to be in the office unless, you know, they are given an approval to carry out essential tasks to support our customer. But, you know, as we speak during that time, um, our colleague in in ANZA has actually already started working from home much earlier because of the situation of their country itself. And as we speak as well during that time, um, when I converse with my colleagues in Vietnam, they are actually having that conversation on how to get back to office. You know, that's, you know, show how various the situations, you know, differs from each of the country depending on how that, you know, pandemic pandemic hits the country itself. And in terms of, you know, how the challenge that we anticipate, um, you know, working in the new normal, I think definitely one of the things that I would um, think a biggest challenge for us will be on the employees' mobility itself. You know, with, you know, most of our country where the borders are still closed, I think that's a challenge for us you know, that we have to recognize the fact it's, you know, keeping us very difficult to get the right talents and also resources to support our customers. So, you know, to order, in order to support our customer, actually, um, in the past, we um, relied on our short term assignment, you know, our engineers to fly from other countries, you know, to sp support some of our project at a short time period. But because of this, you know, travel restriction, obviously, this forces, you know, to think and look at other other alternative to manage this as well. So I would also, you know, like to, um, you know, invite my colleague, uh, Rich, if, you know, she has anything particular that she would like to chip in on this point as well. Yeah, Rich, anything that you would like to add on? Uh, yeah, uh, thank you, Prudence. Um, like Prudence has mentioned, our market area consists of different countries with varying economies and different local regulations that pose unique challenges. I'd like to focus on... Uh, for the Philippines in particular, although uh, we, all, we are all advised to work from home at least until the end of the year, um, employees are actually facing difficulties with uh, our erratic internet connection. There's also limited mobility like Prudence has mentioned, since uh, right now we are all still under GCQ until the end of October. There, there is also a sense of dread whenever field employees need to visit our sites for fear that they would get infected, even though the company has provided them a care kit, including, uh, you know, uh, PPEs. I foresee personally that this will be the same challenge as we will be facing until the quarantine is lifted or probably a vaccine is introduced and made available to the general public. Thank you, Rachel. Um, so shifting now a bit, um, the uh, organization-wide efforts that you described uh, across Ericsson are significant. And, um, and you also mentioned in a couple of your comments um, that uh, the kind of preparation uh, that you provided to your managers and your teams to work effectively remotely. But I also heard uh, examples of guides that you provided, uh, things like that. Can you tell us a bit more about how you prepared uh, managers to lead teams um, as they were working remotely 
Rachel, is perhaps you or, or Prudence? Yep. Thanks, Tyler. Maybe I'll take this and you know, Rach can chip in if she has anything you know, to cover uh, specifically um, as well. Um, I think prior, you know, prior to COVID, actually, we you know, do have the flexibility to work from home in Ericsson, right? But it's just that you know, with this current situation, our colleague um, you know, working from home full time most, you know, most of the day as well. So I think that's where we need to really think about the effectiveness of that remote working, you know, especially for our manager when, you know, some manager may be new on how they could lead a virtual team during this time. So in order to help prepare our manager for this, um, within the Moai People team, actually we have provided a virtual leadership and uh, coaching program for our managers. So this program is actually in partnership with our external Lee, Hatch and Harrison. So under this program, there are actually three modules that's being introduced, where the first module is, you know, really talking about engaging a remote teams, you know, how manager could have an active listening, you know, how they could lead remote team at this time around. And the second module is on the reframe to picture, the picture where, you know, they're trying to get how uh, the team member getting unstuck with the current situation and see things from a multiple perspective. And the last module is on the power of conversation and to see like how managers can, you know, really give spontaneous feedback on having an honest uh, conversation during this time around and taking into an expect and creating all this opportunity for a change during this time. So um, like I mentioned earlier on also, you know, the, the webinar that we have organized, there is actually a multiple webinar that we actually have already organized for our people, either the manager or the employee itself you know, to um, help them prepare and also how, giving them the tips on how to work effectively remotely. And also, I think um, we also have this uh, bi-weekly, uh, where we call it a newsletter, Be Well on Tips for Managing Health and Wellness. So actually, um, this just keep, keep getting as a reminder for people. You know, sometimes people need that permission, you know, to you know, have a stop, have a break and prioritize themselves because, you know, sometimes right now when we are working from home right now, you know, maybe we are having that sense, you know, as an employee, is it okay to take a break right now? Is it all right? Because, you know, when we are at working from home, that's where the consciousness of, you know, being on top of everything just kicks in. So that's where I think um, this allows us, you know, to give that permission and tell people to remind them that it is okay to take a break. It is okay, you know, to have a walk and then come back and take meetings or call there later. And also on top of this, I think locally, um, we actually had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with our line managers, um, you know, to talk about how they manage the team, if there are any challenges that they are facing. And similar uh, session is also hosted for our employees where actually we have a one-to-one -one conversation with all our employees where we you know dedicated this full active hour online chat with them via Microsoft team or Skype you know they can you know ask us questions or any concern that they want and we are actually actively addressing their concern during that time and surprisingly when we first roll out we really get a good response from our employee on this initiative. Thank you. So, Rich, yeah, Rich, I'm not sure you would like to add anything from your side as well. Yeah, <laughs> actually, Prudence, you've covered basically most of it, but maybe I can just add on. Um, mm -hmm. I think the regular voice and COVID-19 employee poll surveys that we that we do has encouraged our employees to, you know, speak up. And this has made the management aware of the burning issues that they are faced with. And in turn, um, the training and coaching programs for managers uh, that, that Prudence mentioned earlier, uh, they incorporate this issue, these issues and guide the managers on how to address them. That, thanks, Rachel. So what, what I hear is really a multi-pronged approach that's both conveying information as well as asking for information from the employees. Um, and so I uh, appreciate that, uh, that, uh, that it takes kind of a multi-pronged approach like that for folks to be able to feel comfortable both managing as well as uh, providing and, 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 uh, and asking for information. Um, I'm gonna ask one more question, and this one's for, uh, for Awal. Um, Awal, as you think about your HR and senior leadership people priorities looking forward, what are the things, what are a couple of things that stand out for you most significantly? 
I think uh, I will give uh, that answer in twofold, right? Of course, one part is senior leader and of course the people function on HR that we are referring here. So if I think about senior leader, of course, we want to continue to support our uh, customers. That is the most important. Customer is the forefront that, okay, they should get what support, whatever support they need and whatever support that we are committed to. That is number one. So that will continue. Now, if I go back to the people function part of it, uh, this COVID-19 pandemic is a journey that that taken us through. And it's a learning as well. I think it's not a, uh, no company will say that we are totally prepared because it took us by surprise that, okay, how the, the thing have to deal. One of the areas that we're focusing on reskilling and upskilling, that should be one of the focus areas. Reskilling and upskilling, if I give that example, is very simple that when you talk about telecommunication, everybody on the call, they will talk about 3G, 4G, 5G. If you look at the number three, four, five, that means technology is advancing. And you have to prepare the organization for this advanced technology. And the most the, the way we manage, we use our global skill and scale, right? And you need people to fly over or support remotely. And that's why you have another challenge that you need to also build local talent. Because God forbid that if we struggle bringing our foreign expertise back into the country, and that's where the challenge comes in and we need to focus on localization. How can we build the talent? How can we create a proper succession plan that, okay, if my 5G expert leaves tomorrow, who can take over? In a nutshell, if I look into the two key areas that we should focus on, of course, supporting the customer, that will continue. I'll not go into the numbers that how our numbers will look like. But if I think of people function standpoint, I think it's mostly for reskilling and upskilling of the people, localization and succession. These are the key important priorities that we have on the table. But another important point, we have to stand beside our colleague. That's what we're doing. Talking to the line managers one-to-one, -one, talking to the people one-to-one. -one. These are the two key important elements that will continue in parallel. Wonderful. Thank you. And I'm um, aware that we have about uh, five minutes remaining in the session. And so let me, um, we, uh, we did not have any additional comments or questions from, uh, from participants. Um, and so I uh, would like to then say thank you to Awal, Rachel and Prudence for joining us today. We, uh, we really appreciate your HR team's notable efforts to keep your employees connected in response to COVID and the next normal. We congratulate you again on your certifications as a great place to work in both Singapore and the Philippines. And we really wanna recognize the critical work of Ericsson employees to keep all of us connected with our family members, our friends and colleagues across the globe during these very challenging times. You know, I know that, uh, that for me, um, the, uh, the ability to be able to pick up and have my, uh, my elderly parents pick up a telephone and, uh, and have connectivity, uh, be able to share has really been um, important as I'm sure it has been for, uh, for so many around the world. So uh, thank you and, and thank Erickson for, for that. Thank you very much Tyler for inviting us in this session. So in closing, I wanna invite any of you who have joined today to please contact us at A Great Place to Work if you're interested in learning more about our survey, certification and consulting services. Cyrus will, uh, has included links in the, uh, in the chat box if that's of interest. And um, yeah, uh, uh, well, anything else uh, before we conclude? I, know, I think as I said that it's a great opportunity for us. It's a two way journey between the industry. Now you know us. We are from Ericsson. We are not uh, behind the uh, curtain anymore because uh, uh, we want to be part of the journey, honestly speaking. And whatever industry practices that we are uh, doing in our organization, we are feel free to share with the organ, uh, some of the industries. And we are keen to learn from you. That is one of the important elements that we are here, not to say that what Ericsson does, but also we are here to keen to learn from the industry that so that as an industry, we can go further and support our colleagues and their families. Well, thank you. And, and I appreciate your sharing the examples today. I think that uh, one of the things that we've observed at Great Place to Work is that companies that had a strong culture and strong foundation going into COVID are much better prepared to, to be able to respond. Um, and so I encourage all of you who are, are on the call today, on the webinar today, to think about how you can strengthen and continue to build the cultures that make yours a great place to work, recognizing that your challenges are very different, recognizing your industries are very different, 
and that the solution probably has, so there are probably a number of themes that cut across, but that the actual solutions are, are, are probably quite unique to, to your own needs. And so with that, um, that'll conclude our, our webinar for the day. And I wish you all a great afternoon. Bye-bye now.